Welcome and thank you for joining me here once again on Film Pro Productivity. Each week I introduce concepts that film professionals and other creatives can use to make life easier and avoid creative burnout. I also present time management and lifestyle hacks for a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 26, Shoot With What You've Got. This week I'm postulating on why many of us spend so much time chasing after the next shiny new thing, whether it's a bit of technology or whatever, or feel that we have to wait for the planets to come into just the right alignment before we can even consider getting out there and doing something that we really want to do. For those of us struggling with low budgets, this comes down to just getting out there and doing it. And that could count as much for a larger budget film production that's stretching its money as it might for a low-budget filmmaker, unfortunately, like myself. Now, for filmmakers, and I've discussed this several times with Ian O'Neill from the How They Did It Filmmaking podcast, this comes down to the topic of just shooting with what you've got. That's building your film, utilising the locations, contacts, equipment and cameras, etc. that you have easy access to and not forever procrastinating over it. Now, before we get into all that, last week I introduced you to six productivity extensions for Google Chrome, which will make you more efficient and effective. The call to action encouraged you to try the extensions and see how they worked out for you. And I wouldn't have suggested them if I didn't use them myself. And I do believe that they really will make a difference to your productivity when working online. So listen back if you missed it and let me know how you're getting on and if you're digging them as much as I do. As always, I must say that I really do love the interaction with listeners that comes with this podcast. And the show is on Twitter at FilmProProdPod or on Facebook at FilmProProductivity if you would like to send me a message. Alternatively, you can communicate via the official website at filmproproductivity.com forward slash contact. Have you ever been in a position where you know you need to do things to move forward, but instead you find yourself doing anything but? I talked about it a few weeks back in the procrastination episode, but I want to look at it in a bit more detail here today. I often find myself stalling rather than doing when it comes to filmmaking, and I have a fairly extensive list of excuses that I can call upon to ensure that I just won't get out there and do it. And the number one reason for me, and living in Scotland, this is a fairly legitimate one, is because of the weather. I'm forever looking out the window at the pouring rain and thinking, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. It's not that I don't have wet weather gear and rain covers for my cameras. I do. It's that I can vividly imagine how much of a pain it might be and I stop myself before I even start. I also, or very often, will say to myself, I don't have time, or more realistically, I don't have enough energy. And you can check back to episode 18 for a full breakdown on that one. Lack of mental energy manifests itself as a kind of overwhelming tiredness, which makes staying in and doing administrative work, or frankly, nothing productive at all, just that bit more attractive than going out with a camera. The next excuse that I can pull out of the hat, and I have many more of them in there, is that I don't have the kit. I'm saving up to buy a specific thing, such as a lens or a filter or an add-on like a monitor or other shiny new toy, and I say to myself, I'll just wait for that thing and then everything will be easier and better. And oftentimes it's not the kit that's the problem, it's my knowledge or lack thereof of how to use that kit. I'll be like, I could take this camera out, but I don't intricately know how this really works, and so I find an excuse instead to faff about with it indoors rather than just doing whatever it is that I'd planned to do. Ultimately, I can muster a general feeling of I'm not readiness, a feeling that the planets are not yet in alignment, but that someday soon all will be well and the time will be just right. I convince myself that when this happens or that happens or when I get this latest piece of kit, then and only then will I be ready to do whatever it is that I had planned to do. What's the quote though that I've used before? Someday is not a day of the week. Some of you might say to yourselves, I can't do such and such a thing because I've got kids or because I've got a dog or because I have to do something that's maybe not particularly urgent, but that's on my mind and it's just kicking at me for attention. Well, today's episode is about tackling this form of procrastination and just getting on with things. I'll also look at why some of us get caught up in a cycle of keeping up with the Joneses, and why just getting out there and doing it is likely to be far easier than we think it is. 
Lastly, I'll look at why just shooting with what we have at hand or proceeding with plans even when the planets are not perfectly aligned is essential for our productivity. By researching this topic, I'm kind of hoping to get myself out of a bit of a rut at the same time. At the moment, you see, I'm putting off my filmmaking plans just for a few weeks, but I'm putting them off as I am determined to record this show or this whole season of shows. And it's so important to me that this is shoving all the other things into a big pile in the corner of my mind. If you think I did this podcast just to help you, then think again. I'm actually offering up this topic today to help me as much as you. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. Robert Rodriguez famously said, every director has at least 10 bad films in them. And that's not just an amusing quote, it's actually very closely linked to the topic of today and it mirrors the sentiment of my oft-quoted Hemingway one, the first draft of everything is shit. Perhaps, you see, the reason you find yourself stalling rather than getting out there and doing stuff is because you fear that your work will not be perceived as good enough. And you need to take courage from the words of those that have gone before you, like Rodriguez and Hemingway, and accept that what you are about to film or build or write or make might not be good enough to stand beside the works of Spielberg or indeed Rodriguez or Hemingway, but that you have to get out there and do it anyway. The first quote that I used in this podcast way back in episode one was that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step and that journey, whatever it is, is as true for a film pro, a screenwriter or whatever as it is for anyone else. And if you're a regular listener to this show, you'll recognise that I am covering old ground here, but let me digress for a minute or so more on this topic as it's important. Whether it's the fear of failure or the fear of success or the drive to achieve an unattainable perfection, it all adds up to the same thing. If you can't just get out there and do it, and possibly fail at what you do, you will never succeed, because you will never start. The American writer, publisher, artist and philosopher Albert Hubbard once said, The greatest mistake you can make in life is to be continually fearing you will make one. Albert Hubbard died in 1915, by the way, so this is no new information. In all your excuses for not doing what you want to do, fear of failure, fear of looking silly or incompetent or of being imperfect or criticised by others, is likely to be the reason behind it. Albert Hubbard also said, There is no failure except in no longer trying. C.S. Lewis said failures are finger posts on the road to achievement. Napoleon Hill said most great people have attained their greatest success just one step beyond their greatest failure. And I'll finish up on this point with this quote from Eric Zorn, who said fear of failure is a ticket to mediocrity. If you're not failing from time to time, you're not pushing yourself. And if you're not pushing yourself, you're coasting. And there are literally hundreds of quotes out there that are saying the same thing. If you are not moving forward, if you're finding excuses and stopping yourself from trying, if it's all because you simply fear failure, then get over it and seize control. And before you start hitting me with excuses, it really is that easy. Well, now that I've tackled that old chestnut, let's uh, have a look at a very specific issue which I feel stops filmmakers in particular, and certainly some film pros that I know of too, from getting stuff done. The Canadian novelist W.P. Kinsella said, Success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. What I'm specifically talking about here is the constant need for doing everything with bigger and better equipment. It's what I call shiny new thing syndrome, and when I made that name up, I had no idea that it actually does exist. There's an article in entrepreneur.com that says that at its core, shiny object syndrome, SOS as they call it, is a disease of distraction and it affects entrepreneurs specifically because of the qualities that make them unique. It's called shiny new object syndrome because it's the entrepreneurial equivalent of a small child chasing after shiny objects. In their context, they crave new technology or sometimes just new business opportunities And once they get it, they immediately lose interest and start chasing the next new thing. Nathaniel Hawthorne said something really quite similar. He said, Happiness is like a butterfly which, when pursued, is always beyond our grasp. But if you sit down quietly, meet a light upon you. And I'm firing quotes about happiness at you here as I believe that that is in effect what we are seeking when we hunt for that next shiny thing. 
This is one that I find myself struggling with now and again, and I know I'm not the only one because I see it come up on forums and social media posts like all the time. Many of you listening may have reached for that perfect piece of shiny new equipment because without it, you feel you can't move forward. But then when you get it, you realise that it wasn't that which was holding you back. It was something else. And I've been wondering about this phenomenon. I wonder if I unwittingly have built up a keeping up with the Joneses habit that I'm unable to kick. I'm not trying to keep up with fellow filmmakers who may be the Joneses in this scenario. I'm trying to keep up with my own microwave mentality. See episode 23 about that one. My own microwave mentality of just wanting the next shiny new thing that catches my eye because somewhere at the back of my mind I convince myself that I absolutely need it. When I look at this situation with my higher level thinking head on, I soon realise that my inner I want it now attitude of lusting after material things that will somehow make everything better is a losing battle. Because I know in my heart that using material items to boost my confidence is only ever going to be temporary. Things, material items, will never bring us happiness or contentment in the long run as we know inside that we will have to keep spending to keep that high going every time we think we are close, the bar though gets even higher. As soon as we buy the latest gadget or device, a newer, cooler one comes out. We need to make our financial decisions based on what we want and what we can afford, not on what we think we should do to keep up with an ever-developing world of technology. By living within our means, we can find contentment with the things we already have rather than chasing after what we don't. We need to cut that behaviour loose and focus on what's really important in our lives and work, family, friends, etc. If we stick to our own goals, financial ones as well as creative, and the things that bring us joy, we will not feel the need to keep up with anyone else. I'm very well aware that this is what others might call retail therapy, of course, but I do believe that it short circuits our creative flow. And I'm also very aware that it might seem a bit like I'm going off piste here, but I feel that it's worth taking this a little bit further. You see, shopping also boosts our dopamine levels, the brain chemical responsible for making us feel pleasure. So this shiny new thing syndrome is not only a huge procrastination excuse, but we get rewarded for it with a shopping high. The problem is, of course, that this high doesn't last, and then we're left with the original problem, that of avoidance of the tasks at hand, plus we've got a bill to pay. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, though. If you can afford what you're buying, then it's no big deal at all. In fact, Psychology Today researchers found that 62% of shoppers have purchased something just to cheer themselves up. I think the figure's probably higher. They call it retail therapy because shopping can make some of us feel a lot better especially when we're feeling down or stressed out. Tammy Faye Backer said, I always say shopping is cheaper than a psychiatrist, in fact. (laughs) But the real problem comes when you're using shopping as a crutch to avoid doing your work or when you're spending more than you can afford and running up debt. If you find you've got a problem with emotional spending like this, there are ways to beat it. The first thing to curbing retail therapy is understanding what drives you to spend, what moods or things will tempt you to make unplanned purchases. If you know your spending triggers, you can find ways to combat and or avoid those spending temptations entirely. Next, monitor your spending to find emotional purchases. The only way uh, to know all about your emotional spending habits, you see, is to track them and track your daily spending. Another way to reduce emotional spending is by using the 48-hour rule. This is a simple but effective way to deal with spending temptations. Instead of dropping a specific want into your shopping basket, which is so easy to do in in all of these apps like Amazon or eBay or whatever. In fact, I think I've got things in both shopping baskets even as I speak. But what you do instead of what I've done, what you do instead is you write it down, uh, you write down the item's name and the price on a notepad and you give yourself 40 hours to think about it and you think about what its impact it's going to have on your monthly spending and you use that to inform your decision as to whether you should buy it or not. Many people have found budgeting to be a proven way to reduce spending or reduce overspending, I should say. 
you should stick to an overall monthly budget that will force you to save or invest a certain amount each month while spending on things that you need and paying down your debt. Another thing you could do just to finish this off is treat yourself with smaller purchases, purchases that are within your budget. Put aside like a fun budget that allows you to make small buys with freedom and without regret. There's nothing wrong with emotional spending if you have it as part of your budget and can keep your overall financial goals on track. You only get in trouble when you put yourself into debt or lose control. I can't go into a shoot with what you've got topic without going back to Robert Rodriguez and his book Rebel Without a Crew. I'll link to this in the show notes, but please be aware that it's a little bit dated, especially when it comes to technology. Rodriguez made El Mariachi in 1995, and although his story is inspiring and awesome in technology terms and distribution-wise as well, it's far less relevant now than it once was. The basic message from the book is, though, still essentially vital. Make a film with the resources you have at hand in the place where you live. In other words, shoot with what you've got. Rodriguez says creativity, not money, is used to solve problems. And I think that goes far beyond just filmmaking. I think in whatever your creative endeavour, that statement will make sense to you. And so once you've beaten your fixation on the next shiny new thing and stopped procrastinating with a ton of reasons for why you shouldn't make your first film or write your first screenplay or compose your first score or whatever your creative drive is, then take a leaf out of his book and move forward with what you've got. Rodriguez tells aspiring filmmakers to become technical, to learn the tools of the trade. If you don't, he says, you might become overly reliant on the techies who may or may not be interested in realising your vision. He later asks, anyone know how to write? And the audience shrug and he says, no, good. Everyone writes the same way. Start writing your way. That makes you unique. And I'll come back to that uniqueness later on as it's essential, I think, to a core message in all of this. In his 10-minute film school video, Rodriguez pushes on and he says, you want to make a cheap movie? But how do you make a cheap movie? He says, list the actors, locations, props and equipment you can get hold of. What have you got round about you? What talents do your actor friends have and what roles were they born to play? A doctor? A scientist? A bong head? A cop? A guitar player? He says, have you got a dog? Then make a movie about a dog. What locations can you get access to, he says? A nightclub? An office, a factory, an old folks home? Make a movie about that. What props can you get hold of? A burger van? A wheelbarrow? A stepladder? He says take the list of things you can get hold of and build your story around that. He had a guitar case, a turtle and a small Texan town, was it? Or a Mexican town? At his disposal when he started out. And with that, he strung together the story of El Mariachi. On the topic of shiny new things, he states... You don't want anything too fancy. Fancy equipment makes for lifeless, dull films lacking in that reckless, adventurous spirit of the newbie movie maker. He talks about equipment and he says shoot with what you have. He used a camera which to my eye now is big and bulky, but to him at the time it was fast and light. He says don't spend your own money on kit, but find some monkey, in his words, who owns one and borrow it or rent it for not a lot. Again, the message here is shoot with what you can get your hands on. He goes further than that and says, add life to your film by getting rid of the fancy stuff. Get rid of it and shoot fast and light. And he goes further still and says, don't over light. And that's a problem I've seen on low budget sets that suddenly get injected money from maybe a a funding organisation. They're lit within an inch of their life and they do look beautiful perhaps. But they take so long setting it all up that they've barely any time left to shoot the movie. I'm kind of kidding, but at the same time, I'm really not. I've seen very, very undershot movies that look beautiful, but they've not quite covered the story. It's a genuine problem. And just to finish up on this topic, by shooting low budget, and in the 20 plus years since, Rodriguez has maintained creative control over just about every single one of his movies because he doesn't go in too deep. He doesn't overstretch, and he doesn't lose control. I want to end with a core message about uniqueness. And again, it's another quote from Robert Rodriguez. He said, All those years I have been making movies because I loved movies. And that's what made all the difference. If you're doing it because you love it, 
you can succeed because you'll work harder than anyone else around you, take on challenges no one else would dare to take, and come up with methods no one else would discover, especially when their prime drive is fame and fortune. All that will follow later if you really love what you do, because your work will speak for itself. He says your work will speak for itself, and that's the vital part of what filmmaking is. I've been sidetracked for a couple of years, quite happily to some extent, but I've been sidetracked away from creating my own work, and it's left me with a slight feeling of dissatisfaction in the end. Series 1 of this podcast was loosely themed around moving on from burnout to badass, or words to that effect, but this series is loosely themed around making sure that you follow your own path and dreams and vision, and the secret of success in being a creative, I've come to believe in all this, is maintaining, protecting and being able to deliver work which has your own uniqueness in it. As creatives, it's our unique voices that will win us awards, not keeping up with the Joneses or that shiny new bit of kit. It's standing up and offering something new and unique and saying, I made this. Herman Melville said, It is better to fail in originality than succeed in imitation. I say, It is through originality that you will truly find success and ultimately happiness. As a call to action this week, and if you want to follow the Robert Rodriguez example, then make a list of your accessible resources, write a brilliant film that exploits them, then plan to shoot and edit with what you've got. And if you're not a filmmaker, take from this what lessons you can and use it as inspiration to push you forward in the achievement of your own dreams and your own creative projects. I'll end with one final quote from Robert Rodriguez. It's easier making a smaller film like El Mariachi. There are no budget worries because there's no budget. There's no crew problem because there's no crew. And if you screw up, no one is around to see you screw up. So it's no longer a screw up. So don't give me any money, don't give me any people, but give me freedom and I'll give you a movie that looks gigantic. Thanks again for choosing to spend your valuable time here with me. I hope that you found this episode interesting and inspiring. Now take control of your own destiny, keep on shooting and join me next time on Film Pro Productivity. The music that you're listening to right now is Adventures by Ihumitsu. You can view the show notes for this episode on the official website at filmproproductivity.com. Please follow my personal account on Twitter if you like and Instagram. They're both the same at fight underscore director or follow the show directly on Twitter at filmproprodpod or on Facebook at filmproproductivity. Thanks once more for supporting the show by subscribing spreading the word and leaving an awesome review. See you next week.